Hey everybody, our Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Here's your latest update on Ian. Some things changing a little bit tonight that I'm a little more confident in than even earlier today or yesterday. Let's get right to the satellite imagery. So there's a couple things to note tonight. Uh, we're going through what's called an eye wall replacement cycle right now, which means a new eye wall is forming. So there is a little bit of a flattening in the intensity, maybe even degrading a little bit, uh, but it's still pushing a lot of water towards the coast. In fact, this thing is really starting to produce um, some real heavy rain um, and pushing some big storm surge. If you look at the radar, you can actually kind of see, I'm going to go back a couple frames. See this, we call this a hub cloud um, and it shows up on the radar and satellite sometimes. So this is the old eye wall and this bigger, wider one is going to take over. You're going to watch this one kind of dissipate and a new eye wall form. This is common in strong hurricanes. So you see that old one dissipate and then that broader one trying to take over. So it might take a while for this to kind of regenerate um, it doesn't mean it's going to be um, falling apart. It just means it's not in the current state of getting stronger. It's actually leveling off a little bit. So let me show you the latest. Uh, this was the 8 p.m. or the 9 p.m. advisory, which is just an update <clears throat> on the position. Pressure continues to fall. 947 millibars. Winds are 120, gusts to 150. The track is pretty much right towards uh, Coral area, um, Cape Coral area, basically right around. Um, let me go in a little close to Fort Myers, Cape Coral, you know, um, Port Charlotte area, right in here, St. James, um, City, Bonita Springs. You kind of get the idea. That's the general area I think it's going to be, the center is going to go. But the east and right of the landfall is going to be some huge storm surge, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, the other thing that happens, the storm weakens, so it takes a long time to move across central Florida. It's also going to be encountering wind shear and interacting with the front. So it is going to get weaker, but this little track off the southeast coast of Georgia is looking more and more likely to me. I think this is actually going to probably be more out in here, somewhere in here. Um, and that doesn't mean it's going to get stronger. It just means it won't weaken as quickly here, and it's also going to allow for more water to get pushed not only towards the South Carolina coast, but the Georgia coast. And I'll show you that in a minute. So don't think that it's gonna get stronger here. Just think it slows down its degradation, you know, as it moves north. And eventually it does weaken to an extra tropical system. And the reason why, it's gonna be interacting with cold air, dry air, and a front. Doesn't mean that deters the rainfall. It just means it starts becoming kind of an extra tropical system. And I'll kind of show you on the water vapor loop here. I'm gonna switch back to the current um, radar and satellite. And I'm going to show you all this dry air ahead of it. So we'll switch to the water vapor loop. Might take a second to load. Um, but there's a ton of dry air here. So as it moves north, it's going to start encountering this dry air and the wind shear. You can already see this big plume of moisture getting pulled north along the cold front. Um, pretty impressive to see that. So as it gets up in here, you normally say, hey, Brad, it's over warm water. Ugh, the environment here, this strong shear would start tearing this thing apart a little bit. Let's look at the uh, alerts. Obviously, all of Florida, if you're watching from Florida, Please be in your shelter location or evacuated. But you see the tropical storm watch up for parts of South Carolina it makes complete and utter sense there. So let's look at the winds because this will be the interesting part. So you see the, the system coming ashore here. Look at the winds. So big wind impacts for Fort Myers, even Tampa, even though the surge might be less in Tampa, still a ton of rain. Um, and that's the thing. What's going to happen inland here? Is pretty stunning. There's going to be so much rainfall here. This surge is trying to go this way. The rainfall is trying to go offshore. So you can get the idea. There's going to be inland flooded areas like Orlando, um, you know, Central Florida, maybe Daytona Beach. You're going to have some flash flooding inland. And then this try to re tries to reemerge off the east coast again. Not expected to be stronger, but probably still a tropical storm at this strength. Um, and then pushing water against the coast and then moves back into South Carolina. And you can see the wind gusts um, on Friday, probably some 30 or 40 mile wind gusts, now the realm of possibility. So this was the chance of 40 mile per hour winds. I'll, I'll play this out real quick. You can see along the South Carolina coast, Hilton Head, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, you know, between 25, 50% chance of tropical storm force winds. But, you know, most of Florida is going to see some significant wind with this as it moves in and causes all of that heavy rain and wind. Now, what happens as it moves to the Carolinas? Well, that's the next question, right? Um, let me show you the, the super ensembles real quickly here, because I think this will kind of show you kind of the idea. So you see this track offshore. Once it gets into here, notice how there's a lot of curly cues going on here with the tracks. That's an indication that the steering currents are gonna shut down almost completely. The GFS is even more onto this. You see it almost does a loop here. That's the uh, deterministic but even the, the, the mean is kind of doing a loop-de-loop. -loop. So 
it, what I look at when I look at the ensembles, I look at where the clustering is. It's right here, but there's clearly this curve right here. And then it gets up in here and it kind of does either a loop or something and then gets pulled out. So if you look at the, the mean track, it's roughly like this. The shape of the cone would be something like that. So that's pretty consistent in all of the guidance. In fact, if we look at the, the runs of all of the consensus guidance, let me move this over. Hopefully this will, I can't get that all the way over. I was gonna hopefully show it to you. Um, the consistency in all the guidance is basically that this thing is gonna do this kind of S curve going to do this S curve through the southeast. So there's some, some at least some confidence that that type of track is going to happen. So what does that mean for the Carolinas? Obviously, that's the number one thing people locally are going to talk about. Well, I think this means some real heavy rain for our region. You see the, the forecast, the front moving back to the northwest, that big shield of rain interacting with the colder air and the front brings just a ton of rain. So this is through Friday. You see the heavy rain there. Let's go even further into the future. You can see that heavy rain over us Friday into Saturday. Saturday night to Sunday becomes a little more scattered, but that's still a lot of rain, scattered showers, even into Monday. Um, Monday, some scattered showers, but then by Tuesday, still some scattered showers, but eventually by Wednesday, it begins to move out. So the number one threat for our area is going to be flooding, but there is gonna be a heightened wind effect, maybe 35, 40 mile per hour winds. Overall rainfall amounts has not changed all that much. I will post these updates as, as soon as I um, have updates for them, but I'm looking at four to seven for the mountains and foothills, three to five for the Piedmont. So what do you need to be con concerned about in our area, the Charlotte, Western Carolinas area? Rain impacts, number one, medium to high impacts. Um, the only thing that's saving us from this being even higher for a bigger area is the fact that it's so dry. We've had, you know, only I think a couple spots that have seen rain in the last two weeks. Most areas have not seen a drop of rain in two, two and a half weeks. So rain um, is going to be an issue. Could be worse if it wasn't for the dry conditions. What about wind impacts? It's not that the wind impacts are zero. It's just the winds by themselves are gusty, you know, maybe gusts to 30, 35 miles per hour for the Piedmont. Higher gusts in the mountains. You always see higher elevation um, gusts. So there could be some 40, 45. That in and of itself wouldn't be a big deal. But you start saturating the ground that loosens the soil up. And so even weak winds of 20, 25 miles per hour could bring trees down. Uh, big question mark about you know tornadoes. Uh, I, I Normally people would think, okay, tornadoes are a big issue with this track, but because of that cold air damming, the fact that we've got cool air in place, it's gonna kind of save us. It's going to keep the severe weather risk away from us because we don't have the instability. Now, if something should happen where that warm air surges all the way back towards I-85 or I-40 or all the way to the foothills, then we could see more of a severe weather risk. But right now, I don't see that happening. In fact, if I look at the tornado parameters, um, there's there's not much there. You can see Saturday, th there's a little hint, maybe up around Raleigh, Greensboro, but th there's just no, no indication that that's going to be a big problem for us. So right now, I'm counting on the rain being here for the weekend. It looks like it's gonna be soggiest on Friday night through Saturday could become a little more scattered on Sunday. But the good news for us is it's not Florida. It is gonna be a lot worse down there. Bad news for the folks uh, down there towards South Carolina. I was gonna show you this and I'm gonna show you this quickly because I do think the surge potential, you can see Florida obviously over nine feet in Southwestern part of the state. But I do think there is a pretty significant flood threat, a flash flood threat and um, surge threat for parts of the Georgia coast from Brunswick County all the way up into the Charleston area. Charleston you know, floods pretty easily now anyways. And even, you know, some of the beaches from Wilmington South, not that it's going to be a huge surge, but you'd be shocked. I think there's going to be a couple feet of water, maybe three feet um, storm surge up in those areas. Just the persistence of the onshore flow, um, you know, the things moving so slow, the wind fields spreading out. The fact that that's happening is going to give us the potential of at least some water on the coast. So if you're in those areas, I would, I would be overly cautious for storm surge because it can catch you off guard, especially if this hits at high tide. Um, that's something to keep an eye on. High tides in those areas, um, those could mean uh, even higher levels of water and then waves and beach erosion. So that's the latest tonight. I will post a blog again, daily vlogs, vlogs in the morning and then the evening. And then in between, we'll be posting updates uh, on all my social media platforms. So if you can, share this to folks that need this information um, and, and let them know I'll be posting updates frequently over the next couple of days.